Hello, my name is Matthew, and I just finished reading Leonard and Hungry Paul. This is a debut novel by Ronan Hyacin. I'll show you the cover. I read it on my e-reader. And I discovered this book from Sean, from Sean the Book Maniac's channel. And he actually had an interview with the author, which is really cool. Um, it was fantastic and really interesting to listen to the author uh, talk about the novel and just the general discussion. I'll remember to leave a link to the video if, if you're interested in watching it. It's the reason why I, I bought the book and, want, and wanted to read the book. And I liked it. Finishing it, I liked the book. I loved the beginning. It starts so strong. There's a lyrical quality. It's light-hearted. There's so much humor and cleverness. The author is hyper articulate, uh, zooming in perception. Um, the way that he would make minor observations, small little details, and either examine them or expose them in a way that would either show their absurdity or their humor. The two title characters, Leonard and Hungry Paul, are best friends, and they are both in their mid-30s, still living with their mothers, living with their family. Um, Leonard, it b begins, we find out, um, was raised by a single mother. His father died at childbirth. It's that kind of humor which uh, tickled me. Uh, but it begins with Leonard losing his mother. That, that's at the very beginning of the novel. And he visits his friend, Hungry Paul, who lives with his family. He has a, a really healthy, happy family dynamic. Um, it's his, his mother and father, um, and he has a sister, Hungry Paul has a sister who is uh, engaged to be married. And one of my favorite scenes in the whole book is Leonard and Hungry Paul sitting down to play Yahtzee. And it had been so long that they don't quite remember the rules of the game. And so there's that um, beginning moment of confusion and finding out the rules and making sure they're playing it. All the while they are talking about the expansion of the universe. So. Uh, here are these two who can't understand a children's game all the while talking about um, huge big ideas of uh, how the universe and world works around us. I love that. And some of the bigger questions are, are these two characters infantile and immature? Or have they retained some of the better qualities that you have when you are very young, a childlike wonder, um, an innocence, a peacefulness of mind, th things like that. Uh, Leonard is a, um, a children's encyclopedia writer. He, he writes little blurbs that go into um, encyclopedias for children. And his little story is that he meets a girl at work and it's an unlikely um, meet up the way, the way that they, these two get together in a very um, kind of quixotic or madcap coincidence um, that adds a lot to the levity of the story. Um, each, each of the characters has these little storylines that feel um, a little ridiculous, a little silly, um, t not serious in any way. There's very little in the way of consequences or tragedy or real life aspects that so often bog down adults in the real world. Um, even some of the serious questions that come up are handled with tact and humor. Um, 
I'll say that the first third I just thought was powerful and magical, lyrical, whimsical, and so much of it came from um, the, the authorial tone, the kind of sparkling way that uh, things were described and humor pieces that were really funny. I think three times in this novel I had one of those audible guffaws. Just an absurd situation that had a great punchline. Now, unfortunately, my enthusiasm of the book gradually kept declining and initially I thought it was because we were switching storylines. There's, uh, there's Leonard has a story, Hungry Paul has a story, Hungry Paul's sister and her engagement and the parents. They, they all have little things that are happening and they intersect. But at first I thought, well, I want to get back to the Leonard story or I want to get back to, to the Hungry Paul's storyline or when they are together. I think the book is so strong, strongest when Leonard and Hungry Paul are interacting. Um, as an example, Leonard meets a girl and things don't go quite right. Leonard's awkward, doesn't say the best things, um, but then he relates it to his friend. It reminded me of um, uh, the, those scenes in Seinfeld where George would get himself into a pickle and they would show that on screen, but then have a follow-up with George and Jerry recapping and discussing the pickle that George got himself into. And I caught that a few times where you get to have the story and then the discussion of the story. And uh, the humor in the book and that, that enjoyment in real life, talking about something that happened um, is terrific and related really well in the book. Um, but unfortunately, the magic started going away. The sparkle of the prose started to turn serviceable or just utilitarian. At, at some point, the, the plot kicks in, there's things that have to happen, and the writing is just driving itself to, to get to these parts. So picking up somebody from the airport or um, a dinner scene or just different aspects where a lot of the original, originality, uh, interesting details, um, humorous observations started going away. The humor started going away and it was dictated by the plot. All, all of a sudden it felt like um, wrapping up the story, hitting certain beats, took precedent over what I thought make the, made the book really good. Um, I started questioning, it, it, the tone of the book changed from the beginning to the end, and though there's character development, I didn't feel that it was for the better. Um, at the end of the book, I started questioning whether or not I had just read a YA novel meant for 30-year-olds, or a YA novel with 30-year-olds as the characters. Um, so much of it was inconsequential. The, the romances, the um, little um, conflicts that are in the book, all, all of it felt like it could have been set in a high school, um, and I'll tell you when I when I first started reading the book, uh, I started getting annoyed. I was I was annoyed that I did not have a physical copy. It was so good. I'm about a third of the way, quarter of the way in the book, and I'm thinking, I just bought the ebook, and this is so good that I would want to have a physical copy that I put on my shelves. I don't want to pay twice, you know, that sort of feeling. By the end of the book, I am satisfied with just having the e-copy. So it was good. Um, 
competent, which I don't think anybody would, a, a new author doesn't want to hear, but uh, it's competent. The beginning was magical. Overall, it was well done. So this is uh, uh, Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan Hyacin. Um, debut, so that's pretty good. Um, let me know if you've read it. Let me know if you're interested in reading it. I've been purposefully um, not giving specific plot points because it's it's a new book and I don't want to ruin anything if you're interested um, in reading it. So um, leave a comment if you would like and thank you for watching.